the pacemaker cells in the sinoatrial node of the right atrium determine the firing rate of the entire heart so now how do they do that well they make a pacemaker potential of the heart now what does that mean well that means that the pacemaker current that causes the right atrium to contract is slowly built up in the pacemaking cells with a positive increase in voltage across these cells membranes so imagine bunch of cells whose membranes voltages are becoming increasingly positive now this process of cell membranes becoming positive takes time and it can happen between the end and it happens actually between the end of one action potential and the beginning of the next action potential so now this means that this non-contracting time between our heart beats or also known as the diastole or relaxation time is the pacemaker potential and it's caused by the pacemaker potential so it's the time between the action potentials occur that is the pacemaker potential now this pacemaker potential is also called the diastolic depolarization and it's also called spontaneous depolarization because in the sinoatrial node the depolarization is spontaneous it, it's just happening and that's what determines um, when that what determines the rhythm of the heart because whenever the threshold is reached it'll send an action potential all across the right atrial wall so when the pacemaker potential reaches a certain threshold it triggers an action potential that travels down the entire atrial wall the right atrial wall until it travels um, and reaches t reaches the atrioventricular or AV node which is right here right right between the two arteries the atria when the right atrium and this is what causes the right atria to contract when the current reaches the atrioventricular AV node the right atria will contract when the right atrium contracts the the gate between the right atrium and the right ventricle it's called the tricuspid valve which is right here you can see this these lines going over here this is the tricuspid valve right here in between the right atrium and the right ventricle so the tricuspid valve will open up and send the blood from the right atrium into the into the right ventricle now the action potential passes slowly through the atrioventricular node which is right over there to give the atrium time to contract it passes slowly through this wall into this middle section of the heart which is a wall it's not a cavity and this happens slowly so that the right atrium can contract and that is why the cardiac muscle have a prolonged action potential versus the skeletal muscle because it needs time it needs to give time for the atrium right atrium to contract the action potentials then pass along the atrioventricular bundles which are right here these are the atrioventricular bundles and the AV or atrioventricular bundles are located in the interventricular septum this right here the space right here the wall between the two ventricles 
are called it's called the interventricular septum or the wall between the two ventricles inter meaning between ventricular meaning between the ventricles this is another ventricle and this as you know is a right ventricle um, so so far the action potentials have started in the sinoatrial or the SA node traveled across the right atrial wall cause the right atrium to contract when they reach the atrioventricular node then from the atrioventricular node um, I mean they cause the atrial right atrium to contract and then from the re from the atrioventricular node they travel down from here to the atrioventricular bundles which are these which divide into the right and left bundle branches and these carry the action potentials towards the bottom of the heart also known, known as the apex of the heart through the interventricular septum the bottom of the heart when they reach that the, the action potentials they go to fibers of the bundle branches that are called the Purkinje fibers which are right over here if you can see if you, maybe if you can't see this but imagine the action potential going here and then this it divides into right and left bundles and then it has the smaller bundles coming off of it into the wall and those are those small bundle bundles are or fibers are called the Purkinje fibers the Purkinje fibers rapidly conduct the action potentials from the apex of the heart or the bottom of the heart upward to the remainder of the right atrium and actually the left atrium ventricle uh, ventricle ventriculars um, which is right here this is the left ventricle and this is the right ventricle so the Purkinje fibers will send the action potentials to the walls of the ventri of both of the ventricles after the act uh, action potentials reach both ventricles the ventricles will both together the together will they will contract this ventricle will contract and that ventricle will con contract so what happens is that the right ventricle contracts and the blood pressure inside the right ventricle builds up imagine this space is getting smaller and the blood in it is getting more pressurized the, this forces the pulmonary valve which is right here to open up and this pulmonary valve is also known as the pulmonary semilunar valve and it's called semilunar because it kind of looks like half moons um, the blood enters through the semilunar valve of the pulmonary and it enters the pulmonary trunk which is right over here this is the pulmonary trunk then the blood goes to the lungs from there by because this pulmonary trunk divides into the right and left pulmonary arteries because it's called an artery now because it's taking blood away from the heart then the blood goes to the lungs and gets new oxygen the blood comes back to the left side of the heart by the left pulmonary veins now where are these these are the left pulmonary veins and you can see that they're called the pulmonary veins because they're bringing blood into the heart towards the heart and the left pulmonary veins will take the blood into the left atrium this is the left atrium right here okay and which will contract along with the right atrium both of these atrium atrias 
will contract together and both of these ventricles contract together. They don't contract at the same time because that would be counterproductive. So this left atrium contracts and pushes the blood into the left ventricle. This is the left ventricle as we said. And, and the valve here is called the bicuspid sectional 